So this is going to be a quick one because this is just going to be a kind of fast and loose chat about The Dying Earth by Jack Vance, which is very good. The Dying Earth is four different books and it's combined into one easy to grab, relatively affordable edition with cover art that looks nothing like anything described in the book itself. While I appreciate the art, um, yeah, I don't know why it's there. If you want to see some cool art, I'll post it up here while I'm talking, and it's from some of the other covers. The first book, The Dying Earth, is a collection of short stories from Jack Vance in 1950. They were serialized in different magazines of the era. What it talks about is the Earth, a few million years in the future when our sun is dying. We've gotten to the point with technology and the discovery of magic, or is it just a technology we didn't know about? Who knows? It's that whole magic and technology are indistinguishable from one another if you don't understand them. And this is part of Appendix N, which is one of the reasons I finally read it. And this is one of those things where you see pieces of Dungeons and Dragons in here. You have what is called Vancean magic because of Jack Vance in Dungeons and Dragons, and that's where a wizard has to memorize a spell, and a wizard's brain is only capable of holding so many spells, and you have to prepare them every morning, and when you use it, it just whips out of your mind, and it's gone until you memorize it again. That is in here, along with things like vat-grown monsters and weird stuff. While Dying Earth, the book, is good, the stories are kind of hit or miss. It's a short story collection, which I know a lot of people struggle with. And I don't think you need to start with The Dying Earth. You can start with what I consider the best books in the series. The first one being The Eyes of the Overworld. And you follow Kugel the Clever. And Kugel the Clever is a bit of a scumbag. In The Eyes of the Overworld, he almost reads like a sociopath. But it is just so good. I've said it before and I will always say it when he comes up. Kugel the Clever makes the best smooth-brained 200 IQ plays. His plans are always like so convoluted. So much of it is left to chance, but somehow it ends up working out. And it's so funny. Eyes of the Overworld and the sequel are what made me fall in love with the picaresque novel. Like Jack Vance is a literary genius. He took the picaresque and put it into fantasy in a way that no one had done before. And Kugel is such a trip to read about. And that is why I absolutely love Kugel Saga, which is the sequel to The Eyes of the Overworld. And if you're going to start, you should probably start with those. They're so entertaining and you get this taste of what the dying earth really is. I mean, the, the earth is going to end and no one knows when. And so there's all these people always trying to scam one another. And there's a lot of social commentary in these books. I mean, like in Eyes of the Overworld, you literally have to take off your rose tinted glasses to see the world for what it actually is. It's just so interesting. And in Kugel Saga, you really get a taste of what the dying earth is like. And you just get more time with Kugel as he is just a scamp and a scallywag and whatever other good word starts with an S that describes him. The final book in the series is Rialto the Marvelous, and it is another collection of short stories, and it actually takes place in a different part of the Earth from where the Dying Earth takes place and Kugel Saga and all that. And it is just okay. It is a collection of three stories that involve a character named Rialto. He is Rialto the Marvelous, and I believe he named himself that. No hubris there. The first story in Rialto the Marvelous is just okay. And honestly, if you're reading these and you're not a completionist, then just read Fader's Waft. The third story is also not very good. But Fader's Waft is very interesting. The only problem with it is there's like this gag at one point. He just kept repeating it. And it's like, come on, man. Like, it's not funny anymore. You've done it like six or seven times now. Five was enough. Other than that, the story is very good. It's got all this like kind of courtroom drama because Rialto is being prosecuted by his peers over something and he has to like travel back in time to find the document to prove his innocence. And while he's trying to do that, the guy that screwed him over keeps getting to the point in time first, either moving the object or or trying to destroy it. And it's just really ridiculous. So it's fun. But 
it's just not as good as the other stuff. If you're a completionist, you should still probably start with Kugel because it will get you invested in the dying earth as a setting. And then you can go back and read the first set of short stories. But if you really want my advice on what you should just read that are the must reads for the dying earth, read The Eyes of the Overworld, Kugel Saga, and Fader's Waft, which is the second book in Rialto the Marvelous. And fortunately, all of them are in one book, so you don't have to go scrabbling around and kind of half reading three different books. You can just grab this and read the stories that matter, and then you can move on to what I'm going to move on to, which is Songs of the Dying Earth, edited by George R. R. Martin, and it has all of the writers I enjoy in one book writing Dying Earth stories. Super excited to get to it. When I'm done with that, I'll let you know my thoughts on it. Jack Vance was a master of science fiction and fantasy that I don't think a lot of modern readers appreciate, and they should really give his writing a chance. I will warn you, kind of space out the stories, because if you read them all in one go, you're going to get sick of them, and they'll kind of lower in quality in your mind. But yeah, Jack Vance does such an amazing job of writing this wonderful dialogue and he uses these very like proper words and you're going to expand your vocabulary reading Jack Vance. It's such an interesting dichotomy of people talking in these very eloquent ways and in this very interesting dialogue and everyone being a shithead to each other. You have to read it to understand what I'm talking about and I highly recommend it. I think Jack Vance is one of the better writers on Appendix N, which is the collection of books and writers that influence Dungeons and Dragons. So please go give him a chance. Let me know in the comments if you have given Jack Vance a chance and what you think about him. And any recommendations for his works that aren't The Dying Earth, I would love to hear because I always want to expand my collection of books written by him. And thanks for watching. And with that, I'll see you next time.